people, First Nations, Métis, Inuit, all of us, have been the victims of spiritual and political oppression since the creation of this country. Shamatawa, my home community, has been the victim of isolation, which is probably one of the worst types of oppression because then you're by yourself. I'm a product of the child welfare system. That means when I was born, my mother and my family wasn't able to take care of me, and I got put into the care of the government system called the child welfare system. And I was adopted. This is family oppression. I live in the North End. We don't have a lot of money there. This is poverty, economic oppression. Except when I see these words, <laughs> the red ones, <laughs> red's my favorite color, just saying. Um, I don't see all of those, you know, under, undertones. I don't see oppression because I'm proud of where I come from. And I'm, as much as these labels, a lot of people see those and, and they think uh, hopeless. They think gangster. <laughs> they think no good. And because the dominant society so often puts these kind of labels and makes young people live these realities, these oppressive realities, every single day. A lot of the young people in my life that I love dearly feel that they have no future. I used to be one of them. When I was in grade four, I was going to an elementary school in the North End, and I was being bullied a lot because I liked reading, and <laughs> uh, I don't know, I guess I talk a lot, and I don't even know what the reasons were, but I was bullied a lot. A lot of really hurtful names, and I'm not going to say them. But being oppressed even by my peers was a reality that I had to face. And in that grade four, 10-year-old mind of mine, I felt hopeless, and I wanted to commit suicide. This is a reality that young people from my community face every single day. Opportunity. A favorable combination of circumstances. I don't like oppression very much, but I do like opportunity. And I like opportunity because it means the circumstances that we are lined up with, that we are fed, that we face every single day are favorable. And even though all of these things a lot of people may view as unfavorable or reasons that I should give up or reasons that I should be hopeless, that's not how I see it and that's not how the young people in my community see it. In reality, that's an opportunity. And it's an opportunity because as young Aboriginal people, and it doesn't matter where you are, I don't care if you're in Attawapiskat, I don't care if you're in Regina, I don't care if you're in Toronto, if you're in BC, I don't care. Those labels, that oppression, do not define you. You have to look at those labels as an opportunity. Because if you're young, if you're Aboriginal, and you're alive, you're a fighter and you're strong, and I believe in you. I believe in you because I know what it's like to be hopeless, and I know what it's like to feel oppressed, and to have that as my reality where I don't feel, I don't feel hope. Recently, I was able to learn about my culture and what it means to be Aboriginal, and our traditions, and the beauty in our people. And I actually was given an opportunity, so I put it in my gift box. And I wanted to share this opportunity with you folks, because it's something that's very important to me. This is an eagle feather. This is a smudge bowl. This is sage. This is a lighter, it's supposed to be fire. <laughs> Not as dramatic. Um, but smudging is an example of a tradition that um, traditionally we maybe weren't allowed to do. 
and as part of the oppression of Aboriginal people for many years. We were not allowed to practice our traditions, and it was supported by government. And so I smudge, because what this does is it brings those four elements together, the air, the sea, the earth, and when it burns, the fire. And those four elements represent the four directions, the four colors of man, the four seasons, a naturally occurring theme within like the entire world. <laughs> and, so, and so when we smudge, um, the smoke that comes out, um, as we, we use the smoke as an opportunity to acknowledge our spirits, because I don't think we do that enough. And we acknowledge our spirit, and as we're smudging, we invite positivity, and we rinse away negativity. <sighs> and another thing I learned about being Cree and about being Aboriginal means we have to share. And so I'm not going to do this just by myself. I want to share this with all of you. I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. Kale Bonham, hey, <laughs> come on up here for a second, Kale. Kale, if you would be so kind as to smudge the audience, that would be fantastic. Thanks so much. <sighs> I feel a little bit more ready to tell you about my idea about spreading now. Okay, so probably need my clicker here. Um, smudging. Opportunity to reclaim our culture, to share what is beautiful about our people. To share what is good about being Aboriginal, because there's lots of it. And in Manitoba, 10% of the population here identify as First Nations, Métis, or Inuit. That's wicked. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm excited about that. I'm proud of Manitoba, and I'm proud of us as a people, because we're alive, and we survived. This medicine wheel is a big part of my culture. I talked about those four elements. <laughs> There's a bunch of four things I can fit into here, the four seasons. You could also look at it as the four parts of ourselves. And so, for me, when I look at that medicine wheel, in the east, the yellow part, I see my spirit, and I acknowledge it. In the south, that's the physical part of us, that's our bodies, and I acknowledge it. In the West, I see um, the emotional part of ourselves. I'm feeling a little emotional right now. Um, and in the North, we have our mental part of ourselves. And so this medicine wheel really is a lens with which to see the world and with which to approach every challenge, every oppression. And if we try to approach things from a balanced perspective, acknowledging all of the different parts of ourselves and the people we're working with, we can't help but be successful. We have seven teachings that are present within our culture. Love, humility, respect, courage, wisdom, truth. These seven teachings also have to be a part of everything we do. And as part of my idea, <laughs> I wanted to explain to you how I've been able to start an anti-gang in one of the most oppressed communities in Canada. I started this anti-gang because many young people that I worked with were involved in negative things. The first thing that I did, oh, my PowerPoint is being very freaky. Okay. First thing I did was we identified the oppression. Second thing I did was I asked the young people to come together. Next, I gave everyone a job because everyone has a gift. Four, we decided on the next meeting. Five, follow up individually in between the meetings to make sure everyone's doing all right. And number six, if it comes, is repeat. Do it over and over and over. Ayo, Aboriginal Youth Opportunities. <laughs> this group of committed young people are fighting stereotypes through a group called AO Leadership. It's the group of young people that I work with, and all of these young people believe every single thing that I just said about the beauty of our people and the strengths that are present within being Aboriginal. Thanks, Kale. We've decided that as young people, we have to dream big with our spirits. 
we have decided that as young people, we have to share your vision. And this is how all you can do it too. You have to lead with your heart. And you always have to learn. Commit to it. Always learning. And this group of young people, we really want to address the stereotypes that people think of Aboriginal people, and we want to change it. We want to address the hypocrisy that is present within the systems around us, and so we have to get inside those institutions. We're going to take our culture back. We break shit. <laughs> Some of our ideas have included political enlightenment to fight the political oppression that we face. We have a politics initiative that brings young people together so they can ask politicians the questions that they want. And guess what? The politicians, they have to answer yes or no. They don't even get to talk. How's that for a power switch? <laughs> we have creative writing and self-expression. This was drawn by a 14-year-old girl that went to Children of the Earth High School. Talent, skill, self-expression. Our young people can do it, and they can do it well. Healing and justice. The healing still continues as a group committed to reclaiming our culture, reclaiming our traditions, and making sure that as Aboriginal people, we can truly feel justice inside. And then we made this thing, Eros Youth Engagement Strategy. We actually can be hired by communities, and we can go there, and we can teach social workers, teachers, youth workers, community workers, anyone that works with young Aboriginal people, that everyone has a gift. Everyone. And it's young people doing the training. We started a non, an anti-violence initiative called Meet Me at the Bell Tower. Hope. We meet every Friday at 6 at the Bell Tower on Selkirk Avenue in the North End. Every single thing I said has happened because I remember that I've got to be flexible. I've got to roll with the punches. It's youth-directed. The young people know what is wrong and they know how to fix it. Ideas first. Just run with it. I don't care if you got money. I don't care if you got resources. Take your idea and love it and run with it. Relationships. You got to care. You got to be real about it. It's important for me to make sure that I show all of you, and especially the young people listening, especially the oppressed young people listening, that you do have a future. I believe in you. I did it. And all of you can do it too. And so we can take this crappy word of oppression, throw it away, and we can replace it with this idea of opportunity. You can do it too. Thank you. Thank you.